Yes. Sorry, was wondering how it went. How did the rest of the tour go? It went really well, even with DeAndre's antics. He's good with the kids, probably because he's childish himself and kept them entertained. Backhanded compliment, but it's better than, you know, <laughs> I hate him. So starts where you can get them. This year has been a truly interesting experience. Oh, in what way? I've been talking to other students, or first you, show, even DeAndre. I never expected Hendrik to ask me to help out with the tour either. It's a bit overwhelming at times, I'm not used to socialising, but I don't mind. What a god. Even so, I think you've been doing a good job. I'm not great at explaining things, but you seem more relaxed than when we first met. It's something I have to work on, but thank you. Feeling our conversation die down, we return to our tasks. He was still as diligent as ever. I'm glad he opened up a little during this excavation. I'm glad to. Sort of. Oh god. We have another lab! Woohoo! Who's excited for some lab work? Ah, oh, still RNG. I'm still mildly bitter. Ah, oh, whoosh! Amazing job today! What a god of the people! Middle Paleolithic. We're going all of the things in lab. I feel like we're further along with that. Come on. Oh, for God's sake. Look, all you need is one thing to work in culture and you'll be fine. You'll have a hundred culture. Okay, let's see how easy this is. See? Pretty goddamn easy. Okay, whoosh. Okay, so, I I did all this, I cocked up once because I think I got a little bit too clever, and then I realised that there were only seven here, not eight. And then this was guesswork. If this isn't right, we have to start all of up here again. Fuck. Ugh. That's so annoying. I couldn't figure out how to do this, and I wanted to end it quickly, so I sort of guessed something up here. Uh, grumble, grumble.
Okay, here's hoping this works. Oh, okay. So last time I guessed and put the one here, and then I just turned it around and put the one there, and it all worked off, off the back of that. Got there eventually. Oh, I speed these up at 230%. I might have to do that one a little bit more. I stared at the wet screen, one hand swishing the drenched tray while the other held the water hose. Dirt and debris vanished through the holes, leaving a larger objects for examining. Nothing stood out at first. A few bone fragments I overlooked. I casually dropped them into the plastic cups and returned to my scratch. Oh, good. I picked up a rock with a cream tinge to it, admiring the colour before I noticed smooth grooves in one side. Any curiosity I had plunged into the pit of my stomach when I realised what it was. Oh no. I found a flint in my tamisage. Oh god. We done fucked up, didn't we? Calm down, Melissa. It's not like you're the first person to do this or the last. It happened to Dexter recently and another student did the same thing. Still, it sucks. I turned it over and raised my eyebrow when I noticed the latticed cracks on one side. It looked like as if it shattered inwardly. Did you find something? Did you find something particularly interesting in your damaged little flower? I nearly dropped the specimen and, and tottered on the concrete block. Oh, Augustine. Uh, yeah, I guess I did. Before I could plop it back onto the tray, Augustine extended his hand. I reluctantly surrendered the flint, dreading his reaction. Do you have any idea what you have found? Flint? His hand squeezed the stone briefly before displaying it, one finger tracing the fractures. Bent flint, Melissa. He stole a glance at my cup, which had its layer 3D RG clearly marked with a black marker. And we had yet to find one in this layer. Now one has turned up with less context in the tamisage. Disappointment flickered across his face, and I turned off the faucet, anticipating a lecture. Uh, at least I was able to pinpoint which layer it came from? Yes, but we will never know how it was positioned. Can you explain what kind of layer you're working on? Um, it's during a cooling period, and there are more clay sediments. It's roughly 120,000 years old, give or take. You invite students in, okay? You're gonna have to expect the odd cock up here and there. Well, I mean, you'd think he is. This is like a stint, I guess. It's also during a time where we have little information on. We have everything we find is extremely important, and finding it in context will help us piece together what happened all those years ago. Right, Hendrik went over this with me when I didn't fill out the grid. Um, is there something significant about Burnt Flint? Gosh, I was at square one again with my amateur questions. No matter how much I learned, it felt like I was never enough. If Flint is heated up to 450 degrees Celsius, its previous irradiation is erased. We can then date it to the last time it was used in a half or fire. However, it is heavily contaminated at this point, and being able to accurately date it will be nigh impossible. Well, we know the eight layers age, so we can safely guess. Melissa, do you even understand the gravity of this find? The layer's age does not equal the age of the object. Look, I get it, okay? I'm mildly cocked up. I'm sorry. Without this position recorded, we have no idea how it ended up in the layer. I'm severely disappointed in you. We are Sanjo Square since Shady students have always performed outstandingly, and I thought you would be no exception. There was a shuffle as show into the room from outside. He must have sensed the tense atmosphere since he timidly walked past us. We exchanged glances and he seemed unsure of what to do. He stalled, but Agustin picked up on it. He barked something in French and Shoei flinched. <laughs> Run away, ran away, apparently. Like a puppy being dragged into the night train, Shou unwillingly exited the room. After he disappeared, Agustin tapped the metal rim of the screening platform to catch my attention. The lecture continued for a good 15 minutes, and I felt horrible for anyone who wanted to wet screen or merely passed through. Finally, it reached a merciful conclusion. Here, I'm returning this to you. You sure you don't want it? No, this is part of the wet screening finds now. It would have been crucial if it was found in its original position. He left, and I guiltily dropped the flint into the cup, feeling it was too profound to be mixed with bone shards. Uh, it would have been better if I had overlooked it and accidentally tossed it away. We should have done that, said it was nothing and thrown it away. <laughs> I chewed my lip bitterly as I tried to focus on the wet screen, but my concentration was broken. Sometimes my vision blurred from the pressure behind my eyes. Defeated, I managed to give the wet screening one more look before I turned the tray over and dumped the rest of the debris into the pit below. People walked out of the cave and a simple glance at the clock indicated that it was noon. Maybe some lunch would calm me down. 
Sighing, I tore at the Swiss cheese absentmindedly, my fingers fumbling as I tried to contain my feelings. It was a battle, though. All my mistakes finally caught up to me, and my confidence melted like cheese and hot soup. I see what they did there. That's a reference to something from before. Um, Mel? Y yeah? Are you okay? You seem out of it. Do I look fucking okay? <sighs> Just tired, why'd you ask? Because you're missing your soup. Huh? I glanced down and realized I had a mountain of cheese fragments piled beside my bowl. Whether it was the waste of food or the transparency of my emotions, my eyes watered again, threatening to spill out. Blinking, I held back a hiccuping sob and stood, nearly tripping over the bench in my haste. Are we gonna run away? Mentally apologizing to the poor soul who had to clean up my mess, I retreated to my tent. Yeah, we're a blubbering mess. Well, you know what they say? Mistakes make you stronger, unless you dwell on them and cry. In which case, they don't make you stronger. Moments later, I curled up on the air mattress, my head buried against my knees. Warm tears rolled down my cheeks, and I occasionally wiped my face against them, my pants. Trousers, as other people call it. I'm a failure of an archaeologist. I couldn't even distinguish flint from rubble. <laughs> Crying face. This was a mistake after all. I can't do this. I want to go home. Eh? Cherie must regret bringing me over. Oh, for f We're being a knob. I heard footsteps approach the tent area and I struggled to keep my crying to a minimum. My tent was closed, save for a small slit to allow some fresh air in. I sniffed, but quietened down, not wanting to disturb the person who was probably grabbing a phone or some other procession, or it's DeAndre. However, the steps halted in front of my tent I glanced up curiously, spotting a dark outline through the fabric. Mel, are you in there? Recognizing DeAndre's accent, I wiped my eyes. See, we knew he'd come for us eventually. Yeah, I'm here. Sorry for leaving like that. I needed some time to myself. Do you want to talk about it? No, I don't! Yes, we do. We're not that pathetic. We're not 12. <laughs> DeAndre suddenly morphed into the height of Warwick Davis. I crawled over to the flap and unzipped it to give DeAndre access before scooting back. DeAndre gingerly entered the tent and sat down. He straightened his posture the best he could and glanced around the tent matter-of-factly. I mean, he's not sitting down. That would be an incredible leg position there. It's sure cramped in here. It's a one-person tent. What did you expect, you burly rugby star? He chuckled, but his expression reverted to a serious one once he saw my pitiful curled-up position. <laughs> oh god, are we just in the fucking fetal position? Ugh, that's not a good thing. What happened, Mel? Your folks all right in that? My family is fine. It's about the excavation itself. I expected him to throw another question at me, but he waited for my explanation. After a few breaths to calm myself down, I launched into it. I found burnt, burnt flint in the wet screen, and that's bad. What's worse, Agostin saw it, and I had to listen to him for 20 minutes telling me how disappointed he was. And that's not the first mistake I've made either. I forgot to draw on the grid map and bones kept falling apart in the lab in the beginning. I thought it got better when Agostin quizzed me about my square, but the tears returned and my voice cracked as I continued. Now I'm second guessing myself. I started to feel I stumbled in the wrong direction career-wise. I can't seem to get anything right. I feel like I wasted my time, Cherie's time, and the expenses my parents covered to get me here. Good. So, we're not going on the redemption path, we're going on the pity path. Realising who I was talking to, I jerked my head up and hastily rubbed my eyes. D I'm sorry, you had it worse than I did and retook the course and here I am- Hey, hey, it's okay. Don't compare your problems to mine. Comparing is like the worst thing you could do. Never do that. DeAndre reached out and gently brushed the thumb under my eye. This is something really affecting you right now. Don't belittle your feelings. Not only that, this is something you want to do, right? This is extremely important to you. My lip quivered and I flung myself at DeAndre, wrapping my arms around his neck. He returned the embrace one hand, cradling my head as I buried my face in his shoulder. I felt pathetic, but I wanted to cry and DeAndre had no qualms about it. He'd lightly combed through my hair and muttered the occasional there there. Gradually, my body stopped trembling from the sun. <laughs> Gradually, Christ, we were still crying throughout all of that. And I relaxed against him. His poor shirt was drenched in my tears and nose gunk. I perched my chin on his shoulder. Sorry about that, DeAndre. Thanks for letting me cry it all out. Don't apologize for having emotions. He's a big burly rugby star. He doesn't have emotions if we're believing stereotypes. And I totally stained your shirt, wiped my nose on it and everything. It's only a shirt, nothing a washing machine can't fix. I parted from him reluctantly, he rested his hands on my shoulders and gave me a reassuring grin. Feel better? Yeah. S 
cool. Not sure how good my word is, but I know you've been working your ass off here. Don't let some mistakes stop you. Besides, this is your first real dig. Even if Kyla can screw up, I think it's only to be expected you blunder from time to time too. Wait, Kyla messed up somewhere? Eh, I was asking Hendrik what some bone was and he said he didn't know. A typical Hendrik response. Ah, yes, good ol' know-it-all Hendrik. Anyway, Kylo jumped in saying it was some second, second knuckle bone of whatever extinct animal and Cherie corrected him. I can tell he looks up to her, so seeing his reaction was priceless. We shared a chuckle and I wiped any remaining tears from my cheeks. Thanks for coming to check up on me, DeAndre. It's no problem, Mel, you helped me out too. Well, I actually helped you out a lot longer than this, so I expect you to stay the night now. So, go and I will feel betrayed. But, you know, no worries. He fondly tussled my hair and then briefly glanced down to see the damage done to his shirt. Cute, Mel. Hey, you're the one who said it was only a shirt. Pouting, I shoved him away and he simply laughed. Glad to see you're back to your usual self. Yeah, thanks. I'll rejoin everyone after a small break. After saying good- Ah, oh, I am betrayed. I am actually betrayed. After saying goodbye, DeAndre crawled out of the tent, leaving me with thought my thoughts again. However, I didn't feel as depressed as I did before we visited. Depressed. Good word to use there. I was still a little sore over the whole Tamisage incident, but it was too early for me to give up and declare archaeology the wrong path for me. I could do this! Yeah, damn straight we can. We can do it! Hopefully, maybe, sometimes. Like some of the cases. How about empathy we're just shit at? <sighs> Morning already! Thanks to DeAndre, I felt better off today. You can do it, Mel. Just treat it like a fresh start. If I quit after every hiccup, I wouldn't be in dance competitions. This is no different. Yeah! That didn't seem like a scene wedged in, based on who you'd spoken to the day before. <laughs> Righty-ho, we will do this, which looks easy as hell, and then we'll end the episode. Got it? Good.